Hey guys and welcome to Nickrit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video we are going to go over how to make these cute little baby bears. And before I do that I wanted to apologize for not posting more recently. I promised these last month but um, I got sick with that which shall not be named because of demonetization things. And I thought that if I, uh, it, it was pretty bad. I thought that if I got sick that it would just be a, oh hey you crochet on the couch for a couple days while you deal with being miserable. But no, it decided to uh, make it so that my hands, all my joints, my wrists, everything just were in agonizing pain. So that was why I wasn't able to get anything done. Literally like pain from my wrist all the way down to my elbow and it was just awful. But now I am on the mend. I still sound a little sick, but I'm so much better than I was. And I just wanted to really get this video out. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to have a couple things where I go off on a little spiel, but the timestamp for when the actual video starts is right there. Just some housekeeping. Um, there will be uh, kits available for this bear. So basically it's the same thing as my whale and my bee and my turtle. I have all of those on my Etsy shop and they are just little kits that give you all the yarn. Crochet hooks are uh, optional. If you have your own, then you can omit that. But everything that you would need to follow along with the pattern PDF, uh, all that stuff will be wrapped up into a little kit. If you're interested in that, the link for that will be down below. Um, also, as always with all of my videos for the first week, the pattern PDF for this is going to have a coupon code that makes it free. So go ahead and get that down below if you're here within the first week. And if you are not here within the first week, make sure that you subscribe, hit the little bell, be notified when I post videos. If you're interested in getting free pattern PDFs uh, on Ravelry of all the patterns that I put out here. So hit that little bell, be in the know and all that stuff stuff. Uh, I want to give a shout out really quick to my Patreon supporters, uh, Narzanan, Ashley, Morgan, Annalise, Chandler, and Chandra. I'm hoping I'm saying everybody's name right. Let me know if you're watching and you are one of those people and I'm not saying your name right, but I'll post a little thing saying who the names are. And uh, thank you for supporting my Patreon. Without your help, a lot of these videos would not be possible. All right. Oh, and uh, Discord server. I have a Discord server. It is growing. We're almost at 250 members on that Discord server. And I am looking at working on translations for some of my patterns. So if you're interested in that and have a second language as a skill, uh, I'm still trying to figure out how I would go about these things, what the proper channels for, for translation help and all that stuff is. So let me know if you're interested in that. Comment down below. Hit the Discord link. Join our Discord server. All that good stuff. Patreon. Subscribe. Do all the things putting all that self-promotional stuff out there. All right, so let's go ahead and go for what you will need for this project. Okay, so for this tutorial, we are going off of the base baby Luna body. I am not gonna be showing you how to do the body or the arms or the base head. I have a tutorial on how to make this already. So pop on over there, the link will be down below on how to make the base body, the arms and make the head. I stuffed the arms up to the little hand part right there really quick. And then I also stuffed the body and I did not stuff the head because you need to have the head unstuffed before you attach the nose. The little nose here is attached after, as I bounce the camera for good luck after and then um i also add the ears on after that i add the eyes to center it around the nose it makes it a lot easier than doing it vice versa or any other way so have yourself a quick little pop over to the baby luna video or just follow the pattern pdf which i'll link down below if you're comfortable with making baby lunas this is basically where we're going to start off i use some worsted weight size for yarn to get there. So before you go over there, just to let you know what you'll need. This is across the entire channel, basically for all the baby Lunas. Um, I'm using size four worsted weight yarn and I love this cotton and it is 180 yards and I will easily get two Lunas out of this one skein. Just to give you an idea, this is what's left after I used it on making this body right here. This is how much I have left so I could easily make two. And I'm using antique gold for this bear. I used black pewter, white, and then there's like a brown color as well that I used for all of these. They're all done and I love this cotton. I would recommend using the same yarn across whatever it is you're doing. So it doesn't have to be I love this cotton, but if you're using a size four worsted weight in Red Heart, I would make it so that both the nose and the body are done in that specific brand, if that makes sense. I'm also using this color, um, I believe it's called beige, in for the nose. I did that for the 
cute little brown and black bear that I have. For the white one, I just used white, and for the pewter gray one, I just used a lighter gray. But we're going to be starting off with this little tiny bit of mouth, basically, yarn that I have. It's very remnants. I'll have more than enough to get it done, but I'm using this cute little beige color. I'm also using my size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook as well. We're going to pop this out of the way. And this is my rose gold uh, furls crochet hook. I love this thing. It is gorgeous. It's so pretty. I am using some snippy little scissors. These are just sewing scissors that I bought. I actually collect those and I love them. They're so cute. Uh, darning needle as well for sewing and for adding things on. You're going to need some polyfill. I'm using just some random polyfill that I have. I buy five pound boxes of it. So honestly, you probably wouldn't need more than three ounces. Not even, not even that much for the ounce, for how much uh, stuffing you're going to need. If you just get one of those smaller bags, you can make probably four or five of these little bears. I'm also, also, also using some felt on the backs of these little safety eyes. Uh, I should have a video called How to Do Anime Eyes, and that's what I'm doing for these baby Lunas. I think it's super cute, and it shows how I Cricut cut these. You could easily just use scissors and some felt and cut it yourself. I cut a little hole in the center that's off-center and then add it to the backs of my 20 millimeter eyes. And then I also have these smaller uh, noses. They're significantly smaller than the eyes, but they're really cute and I just have backs for those. I also have affiliate links for these down below if you want to get those or you can easily get them at any kind of craft store like Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, whatever. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so if you've made it this far, it's safe to assume that you've already made your body and you're interested in making the rest of the bear. So for this, I have a Luna head that is not stuffed and it's just hanging out over here. And we want to work on our nose. The nose formation is just a little kind of weird. So I'm going to go over how to do that. You're going to want to know how to single crochet, how to do some increasing, both increasing normal and also the corner increase, which I'll explain the difference as I go along. Um, a corner increase is when you put two extra stitches instead of just one extra stitch. I'll show you how I do it. It's not a big deal. Um, it's called a corner increase because it basically makes you turn the corner super easy uh working in the round and we're going to be doing a little bit of chain work which is a little bit funky in order to get our round mouth shape basically the ear is going to be a little bit easier than the nose so we're going to take our nice little beige yarn here whatever color you're working with for the nose that's what you're going to want to grab and you're going to want to create a slip knot like so you're going to want to be comfortable with making slip knots chaining single crocheting increasing working in the round all that stuff so we're going to make our slip knot like so, and I like to kind of wiggle it around a little bit just to make sure that it's all kind of, I don't know, it just looks better that way. I'm going to put that on my hook, and here we're going to chain four. We're going to go one, two, not split our yarn, three, I don't want that to be quite as wide, three, there we go, and four. So here we're going to skip our first chain from our hook. We have four of them right here. This is our first one. This would be the second one and we're going to go into the front loop, go right through the center essentially of that chain and single crochet one and then single crochet into the next chain as well, which will only leave us, we skipped single crochet, single crochet. That leaves us one to go into and that's the last one right there. We're gonna go inside that one and we're gonna put three single crochet or a corner increase inside that stitch. Essentially our goal is to kind of turn the corner and round it out. So we're gonna go one, go back inside that same chain, two, go back inside that same chain, and three. Mine opens up a little bit when I do that. I like to just pull it. You'll notice that I'm wrapping from under versus over. I have a couple videos where I discuss why I do that, but that's just something I do. If you don't, it's not going to really change too, too much about how your stitches work. It's just how I prefer it. So now what we're going to do is now we're at the bottom. We're going to kind of turn this and you'll see that we have these little back ridges here. One, two, three, four, from our original chain four. And what we're going to do is we're going to, again, 
repeat what we just did on the right side. So this is the wrong side. That was what we just, uh, that's what we're going into now. And we were on the right side. We're going to skip that one chain right there. And we're going to go into this chain right here and this chain and then this final chain right here. We're going to repeat. So we're going to put skip, go into the next chain, the back of it on the wrong side. And I like to take my tail and kind of bring it along the front just so that it kind of gets trapped inside of it. It's not as likely to fall apart there. Tug my tail a bit more and then I'm going to go into the next chain and single crochet one. And now I've got this little tip here, this last chain we're going to put our hook into. And again, keeping our tail in the front, like I usually do whenever I'm hiding things along the first row, we're going to put three single crochet or a double increase, increase two inside that one stitch. So one, go back inside that same stitch, two, and then go back inside that same stitch. And so we should, at the end of this, have 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You have your single crochet two, and then you increase two, which was three. So five times two, because you did it all on the front and the back, you now have 10 stitches. This is how we get to working in the round, and that is our first stitch of our next round right there, or our first single crochet from round one. I hope that makes sense. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to round two. Our tail is just kind of hanging on the back, showing where our rows begin is, where our rows start is. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the next two single crochet. I work through front loop only, but for this, it does not matter. You can go through both loops like so. If you want to go through both loops, I just like going through the front loop only. I think that it makes my stitches look a bit more bubbly and I like it for amigurumi. So single crochet one and then go into the next stitch two. And now we have the three stitches from our last round, our last increase round, and we're going to center that a bit more and give it a bit more roundness. We're going to kind of square it off. I hope that makes sense. We're going to go into this one and do a corner increase. So one, two, three. Now we're going to go into the center of our increase from the previous round and just do a single crochet one. And then go into this one and do another increase. So one, two, three. And again, we're going to, that's the end of this repetition. We did single crochet two, increase two, single crochet one, increase two. And now we're gonna repeat that. So single crochet two, one, two, and increase two on this first part of your last uh, double increase. One, two, three, one, two, three stitches, and then single crochet one, and then double increase as well. So one, two, three. That is the end of row two. And at this point, you were at 10 stitches, but because you did four double increases, you should have eight more increases. So now you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stitches. We are perfectly on. Just always like to double check at the end of every round. It sucks when you've miscounted something and then you're 12 rounds down and you realize you've made a mistake. It's not a fun time. So now we're on round three and this is by far the easiest round. What we're going to do is just single crochet around. But here I like to actually pull my tail forward as a stitch marker, that way I can see. But most of the time when it comes to this, I'll just count it out, honestly and I am going to show you how I slip stitch off on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 nine, ten, eleven. Ooh, I split it, eleven, there we go. And it's flipping out on itself. It's okay if you just need to flip that back out in on itself. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
and 18. All right, now that I know that that's right in line with that, I'm gonna take my tail out. I actually don't really need this tail there anymore. So what I'm going to do is take this and cut a decently long tail. I'd rather have too long of a tail than too short of one. Um, so I just did like 18 inches there. I'm going to actually, instead of slip stitching this off, I'm gonna pull this through and we're gonna do a seamless fasten off. I've done a couple tutorials on this, but I am gonna show you a little bit more slowly uh, on how to do this just for this video. But if you need a bit slower, I do have a tutorial on how to do the seamless fasten off. And it is in my Baby Luna 101 playlist. So here for our seamless fasten off, we're going to skip this stitch that's right after where we just pulled off. There's this stitch right here, and then there's this stitch. And what we're going to do is bounce the camera for good luck, refocus, and we're going to skip this and go from the front of the loop towards the back with our tail. Pull that through. And now you've made the first leg of your fake stitch. And here, I'm then going to go through the center of the stitch that was our last stitch, our 18th stitch from round three. Pull that through, and then just tighten it only as much as you need in order to get it so that it looks like a stitch that's on par with the rest of them. Do not cut this tail. I let this tail be for sewing later on. I just like how this looks better when I'm sewing, so that's why I've started doing this. However, your first tail that you used and worked it through those first couple stitches. You can cut that. I don't cut it super short. Like I let some of it peek through, but that's pretty much it. That is what we're doing for the nose. And now I'm gonna go grab some black yarn so that I can show you how I embroider the little nose part right here and how I add on the nose and then the eyes after I sew on the mouth. I'm gonna show you how I sew on the mouth. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy. And I'm gonna do all that real quick after I get some black yarn. Be right back. All right, so we finished our mouth, and now we're going to find our darning needle. We're going to actually take it off of our mouth. I don't know why I did that. Um, our goal is to get it so that it's sewn onto our face, but first I like to add the nose and the embroidery mouth uh, on there before I do all that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take our little bit of black thread. If you wanted to and you had the time to wait on doing it, and you didn't have black thread, you could easily use some bubble uh, fabric paint, which you can get at the Dollar Tree. Uh, my Dollar Tree has it, I know not everyone does, but or a local craft store, or if you just already have it on hand, you could just do a little line, wait for it to dry, and then add on the nose afterwards. I'd let it cure for like a day before doing that. So again, that's if you have the time and you don't have black yarn. I have some black yarn though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my black yarn on my darning needle. I'm gonna make it so that my two ends are touching get some of the fuzz off. There we go. Put those two together. I apologize if you keep hearing cars. It's just very loud. Uh, it's like time for everybody to come home apparently. Um, we're going to take our darning needle and try to avoid this. We're going to take our darning needle and go through the center along the bottom. Um, this is going to be the bottom so it's going to be the nose up here. That's how I do it and we're going to take our darning needle and go through the center of our first double increase from the very first round. We're gonna pull that. I have my yarn pulled double like so. I think that looks thicker and it looks nice if you don't wanna do that way. Again, uh, the sky's the limit. And then we're gonna go through the second increase, the very first one over here, and pull that through. Try to make sure that your stitches are all going the same direction. So if you have to kind of like wiggle it a little bit, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Just try to arrange it so that it's going straight like that. And I'm then going to take my yarn and do a quick little double knot on the side. I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but this is mine. This is my way to do this. So I'm going to double knot that tightly on the second one. Let it kind of just hang out there. And then this is going to be on the back side. So I'm just gonna, you know, cut that. And it's gonna be on the inside and it's fine <laughs> this is how i do it i'm sure there are better ways to do it but this is how i'm doing about it and now we're going to take our nose this we want along the bottom so we're going to then take our nose and go through the center of that stitch right there oh it's gonna be very very tight wiggle 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 there we go try not to let it so that it sticks above where you're going to sew but that's essentially it for that part. We're gonna add that right there. Take our tail, take our 
capper, our little safety capper, and snap that on however we need to. I hate snapping on noses. Actually, I think that did do its thing. There we go. There we go. It snapped on. So now what we're going to do is sew this on and minorly stuff it. There's so little stuffing when it comes to this, but you're going to take your head and this is where our row started and this is where it ended on the head. I kind of try to center that. It doesn't super duper matter, but that's just what I do. And what we're going to do here is put our nose onto our darning needle. I'm going to put that on and then try to center this. If you need to add a stitch marker of some kind or something to get it so that it matches, you can. I line up my nose so that it is three stitches I line up my nose so that it is three rows. So the final decreasing rounds from your head, we're gonna try to line that up so that it is centered right here. This is why I do this before I add the eyes because I'm not great at sewing these on. Sewing is not my forte and neither is, uh, neither is stuffing, to be honest. We're gonna line up our needle that way and pull through, go through the top of the stitch and go through and kind of try to just line it up so it does not go further than three rows down this way. This is what I do in order to sew it. And I know it's not always perfect, but it's mine. So <laughs> again, I'm trying to get this done without uh, being too, too confusing. Every once in a while, I kind of tug on it without tugging too tight. Um, I'm trying to shape it and put my hook, my, my darning needle in through whatever to cross from and just going like that. Make sure when you're putting your hook, your needle in that you're not um, grabbing the underside or the other side of your uh, work. I've done that before, it sucks. And then you have to undo everything that you just did. Um, it's easier to try to, it's, 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 it takes a second basically. We're gonna go through here and now we're gonna start curving upward. Again, making sure we're not snagging any of the back stitches along the way like trying to grab this side and then sewing it up. That's what I mean. Oh no. And we're gonna keep doing that. And then going up. And that, and again, every couple of stitches, I kind of just tug it to make sure it looks nice and neat. This is so far, I'm not gonna jinx it, but so far it looks like it's actually doing really good. So far trying really hard to sew this the right way. Try to go up, paying attention to where it's in line with your nose, basically on the body. Try to make it so that uh, the stitches that you're going through looks like that. And keep going. I don't stuff it until I get to the very end. I'm getting close to there and now we're along the front again so we're gonna again tug that make sure that it's not too too tight go through here i know it's not the most interesting thing to see all the time and i might go off camera sometimes i'm sorry eee, there we go center that first stitch along the bottom try to make sure i'm putting my fingers underneath it just to make sure Tug, tug, tug. We're getting very close to where I want to stuff. I stuff very minimally when it comes to this. So we'll see. And I also try to go a little bit further out along this stitch than I do others because it just looks better. Pull that there, pull that. And now we've got a fairly minimal hole. And what I'm gonna do is take very, very little of my stuffing and try my best to get it kind of along the underside um, a little bit underneath the nose but that's generally what I'm going to do for my nose just a little tiny bit of stuffing to help it keep from poofing out and making it look weird with that raised nose and we're gonna finish this off like so pull that pull that through, tug every once in a while, 
and uh, my noses don't come out perfect. You can very obviously see that there's some mistakes, especially on like the black and the brown pair. I'm not the best at that. And then we go through here. And this is the final stitch, so what I like to do here is I like to just take it and go through the center of all of it. Tug it, tug it, tug it, tug it. There we go. And I'm, it's a little crooked, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with how that nose looks. I find that if you stuff it less, it looks less bad. We're going to take this little remainder of our um, tail, put it through here. We're also going to take our tail from up here and pull that through there we go and pull all those tails back on the inside and here i like to add my eyes so i'm going to take my eyeball and i like to make it so that the white is facing outward sorry i'm losing my voice and um i like to line it up right around the eyeball between the top ridge of the nose and where it starts to meet the face i like to kind of squish it in Give yourself a chain. Let me see if I can get this off of this stitch. There we go. Pop that in. And make it so that there's like a row, kind of a little bit of spot there. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So right around here is where I'm going to want to put that through, I think. I don't put my backs on until I'm sure that they're where I want them. So those are my eyeballs. I'm actually really happy with that. So now we're going to find our backs and put those on. Ah! I'm going to put this back on and snap. And then take this eye and make sure that it's still going through the stitches. It is. And snap. So I'm going to go off camera. And I'm going to stuff this like I would. Sew my body and my head together. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to make the cute little ear and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done with stuffing and sewing the rest of the body together like so. I sew everything together like I do for my normal baby Luna body. So I'll be right back as soon as that's done and I'll show you how to do the ear. Be right back. All right, so we have sewn all of our body and our head and everything else on, and the only thing that we are missing are the cute little ears. So the ears are super easy, and I'm going to pop the pattern right here so you can see the little XCF file for that. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our main body color yarn. In this case, I'm using, again, the antique gold. I'm going to create a nice little six-inch tail. We're going to grab that move this out of my way over here we're gonna put that onto our slip stitch onto our hook and we're gonna go and make our magic ring like normal like we would for our body we're gonna chain one and then chain two go inside of our first chain if you need to make a magic ring in order to do this this is my version of making a magic ring however you got to go about doing it you do your version and in our magic ring we're going to put five single crochet which is different than what we did for our original body where before we put like six inside every single one of these no this time we're gonna do one two three four five apologize if you hear a humming in the background that is my heater and it is very cold here i believe it is negative eight tonight fun times in maine all right so now we're gonna again take our tail and move that as if it is a piece of our stitches into our work. We're going to do that for round two. That was round one that we just made our ring and put five single crochet. And we're going to go through the front loop only like I did before. You don't have to if you want to go through both loops. You're fine too. I just like doing front loop only. Pull our tail forward. And we're going to put an increase in all of those stitches going from five to ten stitches. So one. Go back inside that same stitch. Two. Next stitch, keeping our tail kind of along the front in the middle. One, or three, four. So that's two stitches inside that one. Go into the third stitch. Five, six. Go into the fourth stitch. Seven, eight. And every once in a while, I kind of just like to tug on my tail that I'm pulling into the center that way it doesn't get all bunched up and weird looking don't pull too tight otherwise you will cinch it and it will look strange last stitch nine ten now we are done with row two one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten stitches, and we're gonna go on our next row, row three. We're going to go from um, ten stitches up to fifteen stitches. So what we're gonna do in order to achieve that, our tail is just kind of laying in the back there. We're going to single crochet one, and then in the next stitch we're going to increase. So one increase all the way around five times. There we go. It's good to say six, but it's five. Next one single crochet one and increase that's our second repetition next stitch single crochet one and increase don't split your yarn fix that two increase there we go in single crochet one increase single crochet one and increase that was our final increase this is our final increase there we go we're going to take our tail and pull that through like so create a nice little marker for us here and for rows four five and six we're just going to single crochet around so just one and i'm going to fast forward through this part we're just maintaining our single crochets all throughout so 15 stitches uh, we're not increasing we're not decreasing for the next three rounds we're just gonna go around for those 15 stitches and I'm gonna fast forward through here to the last stitch for our round six and now what we're going to do is we're going to want to taper off this little ear kind of like pull it in a little bit so I'm gonna go from 15 stitches back down to 10 and the way that I do that is I'm going to single crochet one and then take my hook and do a decrease where I put my hook through both of these stitches like so and then I'm gonna do that five times total so this is my second one and then we're gonna do this on the third one decrease fourth one decrease and then on the last one I like to do things a little bit differently um, it's not super important however you want to slip stitch off I just like to on the very last decrease for that round this is my final stitch so I'm gonna actually skip and slip so skip this stitch and slip into the last one and then I'm going to take that and pull that through. That is the end, and that is our ear. I like to make a nice long ear, pull that off, pull that through, and I'm also going to take my tail and uh, pull that through the center. That way it's kind of just in there. I'm going to take my original tail. You could chop this off, but I'm just going to kind of shove it into the middle of this ear because that's how I roll. That's how I'm going to do that. So now what I like to do is attach these to the top of the head. I am sewing it the same way that I sewed this little mouth here. So, but the way that I like to do it is I like to attach this ear first. That way I can kind of line up how I want it to be a bit better. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and line it up here and I roughly want it right there. I liked it to be in line with the eye. I hope that makes sense. Pull that through, lay this flat to make it a bit easier for me. Um, we're gonna do that and go through the top stitch. Pull that through. Try not to let things get tangled. Pull that through and through, through and through tug our tails a bit there we go and then tug this one tug our tail a bit more pull through there Ooh. there we are pull that try to keep this in line so that it's it's adjacent to your first magic ring six for your head this is kind of hard to do on camera because it's so gummy and big and keep going all the way around all right we're on our 
our final stitch for the right ear and what I like to do is take my tail take my darning needle and then shove it through and then shove it as far away as I can that way if it does for whatever reason unravel this shouldn't unravel it shouldn't be an issue but if it does you'll have more tail to work with so what I want to do here is a make sure that stuffing's back in there and try to make it so that I'm not getting any stuffing to come out and now I'm going to take this and go a little bit further over here and that is it I need for that ear but I want to show how I make it so that it lines up with the other ear I started with that side for a reason that way um, I always go with the ear that I find to be the hardest and I get it done first because my philosophy is just get it over with I know it's a great philosophy but I'm gonna take this ear and since I did it that way I can now count and since my tail is on this side I can now count how many stitches so one two three and this is on the fourth one so I can go one two three four line that up right around here and that should match up pretty well with uh, to make that even essentially so if that's lined up there do my ears look even they look mostly even and I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and sew this ear on and then I will be right back So that is pretty much it. As soon as you add the ears, you can pretty much be done with your bear. Um, I do have an entire playlist on Baby Luna's and the reason I mentioned that is that I have clothes on there like a uh, suspenders dress, some shorts, and more uh, clothing items to come for the Baby Luna's by the way. But the entire Baby Luna playlist shows you how to make other Baby Luna's as well. I have a cute little bunny on there. I also have a ton of other ones on there like Pumpkin Jack which was a Halloween themed one. Um, I'm also going to be coming up and showing you how to make, this is a future tutorial, it's not out yet. Um, I have the pattern for the lion on there, but I have yet to do the cute little cat version. I have a bunch of different versions and I'm going to be doing a lot more of these hopefully in the next coming year. I want to get a bunch of them done, so let me know what you would like to see down below. I have a fox in the works, a raccoon, uh, the cat, the lion, the tiger, oh my, um, bear. <laughs> all those things so basically I have a ton of them that I'm gonna be working on um, I made this one forever ago and I also have a tutorial on how to do cute little girl hair on that playlist if you're interested in making a cute little uh, Luna girl there's uh, gonna be a dress coming up that looks like this it was gonna be for Christmas but it just never happened for Christmas so I'm probably gonna upload it and make it look like a watermelon or something. I was thinking like a cute version of this, but it looks more watermelony. Anyway, that's my side tangent, but I'm really happy with how these turned out. Make sure you get the free printable PDF for the first week. If you are interested in uh, kits for this, I have it on my Etsy, which will all be linked down below. Let me know if you're interested in those and whether or not you would like to see other videos as kits as well. We currently have a um, B a whale and a turtle. I'm going to be uploading the squid as a kit as well soon. I realized that probably would be a very good idea. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash knit. How lucky am I to have gotten that nice little name there. Um, thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, do all of those little things you already know how to do. Hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. And until next time, guys, bye!